Before we get into the video, I just wanted to pop on here real fast and let you all know that you can now use my discount code SPRING15 for 15% off your entire order on my online store. So if you're interested in ordering something handmade, I'll go ahead and leave a link for that down below in the description and let's get into it. Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Please excuse my voice right now as I think I mentioned a couple days ago on YouTube I've come down with a little bit of a head cold but don't worry I feel good and I'm ready to get right back into the swing of things but I thought it'd be kind of fun to wrap up all of my April projects in a everything I made in one month or everything I made in April. So um, I've got a ton of pieces here and some of these I know you guys have seen before. At the very beginning of April I wanted to start off with some crochet beanies and these are the two that I've showcased in my beanie video and I'll link it here in case you guys haven't seen it but these beanies are so quick and easy to whip up like I can probably make two or three of these in one day I literally just put this memory card in and I think it says that I have like three minutes of recording left that's great this beanie pattern is probably the easiest pattern to crochet I pretty much crocheted a perfect rectangle and then I gathered up all the ends and tightened it into a circle and I end up with this but I had a couple people asking how I made the two-tone beanie compared to the one tone and I believe the pattern for the beanie is to make 46 rows so around the 23rd row I cut my yarn and switched to a new color so I'm pretty much following the exact same pattern that I show you guys in the tutorial I'm just changing out my color halfway through the pattern okay so next I have these crochet summer shorts that I showed a couple weeks back and these are by far hello can I help you? And these are by far the comfiest thing I think I've ever crocheted. Um, I believe I use Karen Simply Soft, but these are like squishy, thick material. But yeah, these shorts were extremely easy to make. I pretty much started out by making um, the shape of a skirt and I added about seven or eight inches of high waistness, if you can call it that. And then I added my little crotch center here and then continued to work in the round and I ended up with these. And then for some finishing touches, I added on some shells, which I think makes it look a little bit more feminine. But yeah, I've pretty much been wearing these just around the house. You can wear these out. These are kind of cute for like festival attire. I can see people wearing these to like music concerts and whatnot, but you can wear these as like lounge shorts around the house. I wore these on like a four hour road trip back and forth from Vegas. So you can pretty much wear these wherever you want. And again, I'll link that video somewhere around here. The only thing that I would do different with these shorts is if, if you guys can see my seam is kind of on a slant and that's because I continued to work in the round. An adjustment that I would make to these shorts is instead of working in the round and working clockwise over and over, um, when you hit the end of your row, you turn your work and work the other way. And then when you hit the end of your row, turn your work and work back. So you're kind of working back and forth instead of working in one continuous circle. And that'll give you a straight seam down the middle instead of ending up with this slightly slanted seam. But those are really my only adjustment with these shorts that I would make. Super soft and super stretchy. Yeah. All right, so the next thing that I made, I believe I posted this video only about a week ago, but I made this really cute brown halter top. And I feel like this is gonna be one of those trends for this summer. I've been seeing a lot of halter tops come back in style. The gist of making this halter top is to pretty much make a perfect square and then you just Turn it on its side and add on your straps. And you can use pretty much whatever stitch you want. You can work half double crochets, you can work double crochets, you can add a really cute pattern, which is what I've done. Um, I found this pattern online. I believe it's called the Alpine Stitch. But because this top is just so basic and simple to make, I thought it would be kind of cute to add a little design and give it a little bit of detail so that it's not too boring. But yeah, I got my tie straps here very fashionable and with this top as well you can whip this up in well under a day again you're just making a basic square um, but you can definitely customize this top and make it your own by finding any crochet pattern and implementing it into a square and with this top as well I'm doing the same thing I'm trying to make a halter top out of this is actually still attached to the skein I'm still kind of working on it but I'm trying out a different method of making a square. Instead of starting off with a basic chain and then adding rows to it, I'm pretty much trying to start off with a granny square and then work my way out. 
So I think I only need one or two more rows to this and then I can add my halter straps to it, but I thought it'd be kind of cute to change up the colors and make something bright and vibrant like this red instead of my brown. I thought this would be kind of cute as well. Ooh, this, this with the shorts, that's a look. But yeah, I'm just trying to create this into a halter top as well. Like I said, this is just a granny square pattern. So yeah, when it comes to making something like this square halter top, there's a ton of different ways to go about making it. There's several different ways to build up on a square pattern. Like this one's starting from the center and working outwards, whereas this one is starting with a bottom chain and just adding rows. All you have to do is kind of figure out a pattern that you like and work with it. Coming up here on the end of my stash, I know you guys have seen these before. Um, technically, I believe I made these at the very end of March, but I thought I would just kind of throw these in here as well because these are pretty darn stunning if I say so myself. These are probably my second or third favorite thing that I've ever made, but these two are from my crochet vest video. I just love the yarn. Working up this checkered pattern was pretty fun. You can use any colors you want. White and black would be a good substitute or something even more vibrant with the reds and pinks maybe. Um, I like these more subtle tones, so I picked some jewel, purple, and lilac colors. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this light purple actually has some green reflex in it. So when it hits the sun, yeah, but these are also cropped version. And again, this is probably one of my favorite things that I have ever made. If you couldn't tell, this is my flame vest pattern. I've gotten a ton of requests to make a flame vest tutorial exactly like this one. Um, but my only issue with that is, as you can see, every single row is a different pattern. So nothing repeats exactly the same. And if I were to make a tutorial like that, the video would come out to be like two hours long. It's a ton of editing for me. So for those of you who are interested in making this type of vest on your own, the way that I made this top and my best advice that I can give to you guys is to use graph paper to make this type of pattern. I essentially estimated how many stitches long and tall my vest would end up being. And from there on the graph paper, I physically drew out flame designs and pretty much mapped out what stitches were gonna be what color. I believe if you just kind of go on Google and search graph GAN maker, you'll be able to find pre-made Excel spreadsheets where you can draw on your own pattern, which is what I did. But if you guys don't feel like going through all those steps to make your own vest, I will be selling this on my online shop. So check the link below. And lastly but not least, I don't know if this top counts as something I made in April or May because I made it at the end of April and then finished it on like May 2nd, but this is my off the shoulder hand dyed yarn top and if you guys couldn't tell already I'm obsessed with it. I ended up using a hand dyed yarn that has alternating thickness. So as you guys can see here, my yarn starts off pretty thin. This is like weight one or two knitting yarn. And as you start to add on stitches, you get to this very bulky, fat, chunky yarn. And of course, as you add on rows, you end up with this really unique texture, which I cannot get enough of. And I kind of just whipped this up in two or three days time. I didn't really have an exact pattern that I was going with. I was kind of just winging it and trying it on as I went. And it turned out way better than I expected. So of course I'm obsessed with this yarn now and I think I'm gonna head back to the store and pick up different colorways. But if you guys are also interested in purchasing this off the shoulder top, it will also be on my online store. All right, and oh. Just act like you guys don't see any of these ends. Are they all tucked away? And this is something else that I made this past month, but I didn't really get to showcase it too much to you guys. I wanted to make something pretty unique and one of a kind, and I thought a little patchwork mini purse was the vibe. But here she is in all of her glory. I think I whipped this purse up in about two or three days time, but this was super easy as well. For this purse, I was aiming for a very colorful patchwork style, and that's exactly what I ended up with. But I believe each square came out to uh, five by five inches. So I kind of made this alternating square pattern. I made this really unique yin yang pattern. This one took a little bit more effort. Don't be fooled, this one was a little bit harder. But I also ended up with this smiley face square 
and if you guys have seen this yarn before, oh, almost, but I really like the purple checkered pattern, so I went with that again. But after I made my five by five squares, I stitched them together, added a row or two on the top and on the bottom, and to finish off my little purse, I added a black and white checkered strap. It's a look. Yeah, anyways, that wraps up pretty much everything that I have made in April. And thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you guys again soon. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please take a moment to hit that button right now. It really helps me out and you can join my crochet family. If you guys have made any of my creations and followed my tutorials, please also tag me in your work so that I can see what you guys have made. And I think that's it. I'll see you all soon. Bye.